The Archbishop of Albania, Anastasios Yanolatos, has played a principal role in the resurrection of external missions in contemporary Orthodoxy. His missionary work began in East Africa in 1964, Uganda, Kenya, and in Tanzania, where he baptized the first Orthodox Christians. In the 80s and for 11 years following, he traversed the savannas and the jungles, offering the treasure of the Orthodox faith with much love and self-sacrifice in isolated areas. He's deeply convinced, just as he often writes, that Orthodoxy is not a confederation of churches, but the one holy Catholic and apostolic church to which Christ entrusted the salvation of the whole world in all its geographical and spiritual width and links. In Kenya, he founded the Orthodox Patriarchal Ecclesiastical School of Makarios III, Archbishop of Cyprus, which he also directed for a decade. He ordained 70 African clergy who were graduates of this school. He built dozens of churches and opened health centers. Being himself a professor of the history of religions in the University of Athens, he took care to bring knowledge even to the most remote villages of Africa by founding schools for Africans who didn't have an opportunity to attend school. In 1991, the Ecumenical Patriarchate elected and sent missionary Anastasios as the Patriarchal Exarch on an extremely difficult mission to Albania, destroyed by the Stalinist regime of Enver Hoxha. The problems were enormous. The churches were either in ruins or had been transformed into depots, entertainment centers, offices or stables. Melancholia. How melancholy. What shall we do with all these stones? He began by founding a residential theological academy to prepare a new local clergy since only 15 had survived the terrible persecution. The modern complex is located on the grounds of the Shendlash Monastery near Duras. Up until now, 150 clergy have been ordained. That which was more tragic during the 50 years of persecution wasn't the destruction of churches. More tragic than that was that they destroyed faith and hope from our hearts, soul and conscience. It is there that we must do our greatest work, to rebuild the thousands, the hundreds of thousands of churches and the souls of the people who live in this country. Therefore, it is necessary that we all continue planting the words of God. For that very reason, I beg you to work with us in order for the word of God to be planted fervently and with as many fruits as possible. At the same time, he began a great construction effort. The entire construction effort numbers more than 450 different projects. Two ecclesiastical high schools with dormitories have been opened in Eurocoster and Duras. A boarding school for girls was also opened in Bularat, where about 40 girls from poor families in the surrounding villages are housed and educated. Many of these girls don't have local schools since they were closed due to massive immigration to Greece. In the cities and villages, 20 preschools were opened, as well as three elementary schools. 
As for professional education, the Archbishop has opened a high school geared towards professional development in the town of Mesopotam near Delvina and two professional institutes in Eurocluster and Tirana. These great efforts for education by the Archbishop were also done as ways to allow children and their parents to remain in their own country. He brought water to the villages and made roads in order to reach remote communities. In his travels, Archbishop Anastasios is received with enthusiasm and evident gratitude. In the very difficult decade of the 90s, the Orthodox Church passed out tons of packages of food, clothing, and medications, regardless of religion or ethnic origin. The Church has continued offering free meals at soup kitchens in Korcha and Tirana. Thank the Holy God that in His infinite love will that our meeting this morning in Eurocaster be under this sunny sky. We warmly thank His Beatitude and our beloved brother, Archbishop Anastasios, who organized our visit to Eurocaster. I also congratulate you because God made you worthy to have such a hierarchy in your church. We congratulate you because Archbishop Anastasios is a gift from God to humanity. The orphanage of the church is located in a lovely building beside the Theological Academy. In its 10 years of operation, the seven-story Annunciation Diagnostic Center has received more than 1,300,000 people for medical examinations. The center offers the most modern medical services with well-known doctors. There are medical clinics in four other areas as well. He is doing a big thing for us poor Albanians. Now it isn't necessary to go to Tirana or Yerokastern. We are living on pensions. Anastasios is doing a big thing for us without paying attention to who is Albanian or who is Christian. For him, we are all the same. I, for example, am not Greek, but still, I came. I came and was registered without delay. The publishing house of the church has printed more than 120 liturgical and other spiritual books, in addition to the journals and youth magazines. In spite of the fact that Archbishop Anastasios has an international reputation for having greatly helped the church, the intellectual sphere, and society throughout all these years, he is from time to time the target of attacks and unjust persecution unlike any other religious leader in the country, mostly due to his Greek origin. Nevertheless, he continues to forcefully proclaim the resurrectional message, which is always the message of reconciliation and peaceful coexistence between peoples. Come, receive the light from the unwaning light, in the depressing darkness that embraces humankind. In the midnight of pain, sickness, need, injustice and despair, the Church invites everyone to come and receive the light from the unwaning light. As meaningless and painful as those things that are happening around us and in us may seem, it is without a doubt that human life has its own meaning. God's love and righteousness found their highest expression in the resurrection of Christ by annihilating the rule of hatred and death. Here, the eternal Paschal message of the Gospel reaches its culmination. The Paschal light shows the constant connection between resurrection and the crucifixion by inviting us to accept the logic of voluntary self-sacrifice as a way of life which defeats every kind of death. The resurrection is not something that comes after the cross. 
The resurrection is found in the cross. A light that is not destined just for a few peoples, but for some chosen people. Nor is it restricted just to those, but everyone should embrace it, regardless of nationality, race, color, gender, or origin. Light, more Paschal light in our hearts and faces. Light, more Paschal light in our relationship with others and between groups of people. The unwaning Paschal light that gives meaning, hope, prosperity, love, and strength. Let every one of our thoughts, every word, every act, every moment of silence be enlightened by the light of the resurrection. Christos Christ is risen. Christi ungal.